What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have some fun and we're going to look back at the fight which is one of the proudest days of my life where I won the glory featherweight world title in Dubai against Mosab Amrani. We're going to go through the fight, we're going to look at notable highlights and then I'm going to explain to you what happened, what maybe went wrong, what went right, what the game plan was and we're just going to have a great time looking back at this super exciting fight. My fight against Mosab Amrani was actually nominated for fight of the year within Glory. There were three candidates. Joseph Beltellini versus Nikki Holtzkin ended up winning probably because the big KO finish. But this is a fight I'm very proud of. Not only because it was entertaining, which is something I always want to do when I compete, but more importantly because Mosab Amrani was legitimately the number one fighter in the world when I competed against him. He was the guy to beat. He had taken down Yuta Kubo. He had knocked down and knocked out Liam Harrison with a vicious body hook. He was a scary, scary dude. And going up against him was a massive challenge, one which I was able to rise to the occasion at, but still, it's worth going back and looking at this fight and breaking it down just because, like I said, super fantastic fight. Now, before we dive into the action, I would like to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this episode, by optimizers. I want to talk with you guys in particular about the trip that I had to do for this fight to compete against Mosab Amrani. I had to travel from Victoria, BC over to Dubai. The trip in total took 34 hours. By the time I got there, I was tired, I was jet lagged, and I did not recover properly. I could have competed much better had I been on by optimizers magnesium where the sleep is just that much more dialed in. I've learned since I competed in 2015 in this fight that sleep is a priority. I have gone on in future fights to really try to maximize the sleep and make sure that when I compete, my focus is just that much better. But in the past, I did not have this supplement and it would have helped me so much. So I'm looking forward in the future to being able to take advantage of using magnesium before I compete. If you guys wanna get yourself on some of this magnesium, this amazing supplement, you can go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel, use the promo code Gabriel10 to save 10%, and I will be back midway through the video with a few little pointers on why you wanna get using this supplement right now. But for the moment, let's dive in to this fight right from the opening bell where the action starts. And you guys can see right from the opening, most and I, great stare down, good intensity, when I stare down with somebody, I don't really look in their eyes, I try and look through them. I don't want anything sort of last minute messing with my mentality of the fight, what's gonna happen, so I just kind of look through them, give them sort of that deadpan stare. And actually, Mosab said that when he did the face off with me, he already felt like he was gonna lose, just because of the eye contact, something about that, I don't know. So here we go, opening right from the get go, Mosab comes out in a southpaw stance, which is different than what we prep for. We were prepared for a lot of high volume combos from him early on, go for a big KO. He'd been successful with some good body shots against other opponents. My main goal early on was to make sure that I did not buckle under his pressure. I didn't let myself fall victim to what so many other people have where he just sort of wears them down with that early pressure and they're not able to recover. I wanted to show him that I'm here to fight. Good head evasion early on, making sure I'm not just a standing target. Lots of footwork from me. You can see I'm making it hard for him to land the big shots. When you fight somebody who is a power puncher, they're coming to take your head off, you have to make sure you don't just stand there and be basically a stationary target for them. Because if I guard up, I might have the best guard in the world, but I can't possibly cover everything so all of a sudden something's gonna land, but with footwork, all of a sudden it becomes much more difficult. If you add in some little bit of head movement while keeping your head protected, that much more difficult to actually land a shot. But I was not air free. It does not happen in fights. Mosab is just throwing combos so fast. The body shot there was spectacular. He asked me after the fight, how did these body shots not put you down? And I just said my conditioning to the body was crazy. I always push my body conditioning to an extreme because I basically go, my job is to protect my head. If I'm protecting my head, 
my body is going to be left exposed. And if I take a couple shots, I can't crumple. So I do go above and beyond to get that body conditioning down. So guys like Mosab, after I compete against him, just go, what the heck? You didn't drop. From here in the first round, we see an air. I guard up, I drop my weight forward, and I let Mosab unload. You do not want that happening when you compete. You want to make sure that you are utilizing that footwork, which we already talked about. That was a moment where I did not use it, and you saw the repercussions of that error. In addition, letting your back hit the ring ropes is a terrible idea against a pressure fighter, especially in the early stages of the fight, before you've had time to assess his power. Right against the ring ropes is not where I wanna be. I wanna make sure I'm out in the middle where I have that ability to take that footwork if I need it, to lean back if necessary. When the ring ropes are touching your back, you eliminate that. So I went back to my corner after the first round and they said, no more back against the ring ropes. You've gotta take the center of the ring. You've got to angle. Right at the end of the round here, we see some nice pressure from me, forward, 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 nothing's landing, I back up very quickly. This is something that sort of divides that gap between amateur fighters and high level professionals. When you're on the attack, you need to make that assessment if things are landing flush and if the guy's in danger. If he's not and I continue pressuring forward, the counter shot will come and you might pay. So in that instance, you saw me apply pressure, realize, okay, nothing, stunned him, back out, reset, and then right away back on the attack. Taking those split second moments to break and make sure that you're not making any errors that will lead to you getting clipped is essential for high level fighting. Overall, I'd say round one went quite nicely. Although my back against the ring ropes and taking a few body shots was not ideal, but overall I knew that the first round would be very hard to win. Going into the second round was where we went, okay, now I have to pick it up. Now I have to make sure that I'm really applying some pressure, putting some cardio intensity on Mosab because we know that going into round three and four and five, his cardio would start to waver. So we come out into round two, guns firing, me not giving him any you know, recognition that he can slow me up. I need to tire him out and I need to make him respect me. If the guy does not respect you, he will keep pushing through and pushing through. This fight is just hectic. The both of us are trying to push the pace faster than the other guy. You can see I'm willing to fight in the fray. A little slip there from Mosab. His footing as we get further in the fight becomes less stable. And I knew that going in. That if I could wear him down, he would start making little trips, little slips. And that just doesn't look good to the judges. That's just something when somebody looks unstable and they're wobbling, it just makes the other person look like they're in control. Now here's an important moment that I wanna talk about. I get clipped with the uppercut, but then I still evade the hook. This is another massive gap between an amateur fighter who's still improving and a high level fighter who's got a lot of stuff dialed in. You can get hit, but then recover and stay safe. Whereas many people, when they get hit, they get more and more danger every time after with another shot landing, another shot landing, and they're not able to breach that gap and get back to being protected. This is something that you really have to work on so that your defense is extra sharp. You get clipped, but then you have your eyes still locked on and you can recover with that tight guard. Round two is great. Boom, both of us taking big shots there, standing right in the zone. I'm taking that little step back, controlling the range, Nice high kick, nice front kick right off. That right there was actually something I was taught by a Muay Thai trainer who is in town here. You come with the rear leg round kick and then right after that you come with a spearing front kick. And what happens is people block and then if they go to approach, they end up walking right in. I've tried this many times. It is super effective, something you guys should try out yourselves. Back to the fight, getting into the later stages of round two. You can see that Mosab's starting to slow down just a little bit. I'm able to get off some nice combo work, finish with the low kick. We're bombing punches back and forward. It's only a matter of time till somebody takes a shot. Nice little evasion there. I love this move right here. He moves in into a scissor knee. He blocks it, but it's still very nice technique. Very nice little setup. We see this land very often in the UFC. People approach and the guy throws a switch knee and boom, all of a sudden people are out. Round two was a frantic pace, but you know, I can't let up because we're going into round three and this is the part where we knew he would start to slow down, start to tire. Right from the get-go, Opening round, we can see it's a little bit more controlled than before. He's coming out a little bit more tame. Nice hook from me there, and then right back into the action as soon as he gets clipped. He came out a little more controlled. He gets hit, 
and then all of a sudden he wants that scoring back. He gets a little bit more wild, and we knew that would happen with Mosad. We knew he would come with tight, sharp shots, but the further we would go, the more the shots would start to get wide, leaving his jaw compromised and making it easier for me to see the shots and make sure I get the blocks off. Still utilizing footwork. Big shots coming in from Mosab. I'm trying to evade. Nice little slip out there. Get out of range of that big overhand. He's trying to hit me so hard at this point, probably trying to get that finish because he's starting to get tired, that he legitimately falls. And this is not the first time I've had people do this to me. It's never been in a fight before where somebody's fallen off a punch, but I've had two times where people were trying to hit me so hard in sparring. And this was in particular both times against boxers, guys who came in to just work hands with me. And they swung so hard that they ended up doing a 360 and fell down to the ground because their feet got tangled. You have to be careful when throwing too much power in a punch. You don't want to lose your balance and go down. Back to the action. Once again, bombing shots in back and forward. He's so good at counters. You have to be ready for Mosab counters. If you hit him, he's going to throw back. Nice catch there. Push down. Technically not allowed in glory, but whatever. Somebody leaves their leg out. You hit. They push him down. I say it should be allowed. As we move into the last minute on round number three, I'm applying some solid pressure, trying to make sure I win this round. Mosab's throwing, but things are wild. Beautiful flying knee there. He does a good job getting off the ring ropes. He doesn't want to stay there. It's a bad spot for him at this point now that I have the center of the ring. Mosab's tiring down, no doubt but he's still dangerous. And I really like this little shoulder roll here. He throws just a little subtle lean back, a little fade, just to get your head out of the way and to draw that shoulder up. So if something does land, it clips. It's not always about not getting hit at all. It's just about not getting hit with full impact. And if you can just utilize a little shoulder work, you see Canelo do that very nicely. Shots ricochet off, still hit him, but he's safe because the shot only comes at 20, 30, 40, even 50% power, you're fine. So the action so far has been super exciting. Hopefully you guys are getting a sense and a feeling behind how I prepped up for this fight, what the game plan was, and you're just enjoying the highlight clips. Before we move into round four, which is my personal favorite round of this fight, this is where everything really started to dial in for me and I landed some big shots. I wanna give you guys four reasons that you should start getting yourselves on the magnesium from by optimizers, which we talked about at the beginning of this video. Number one, there are no synthetic additives or preservatives added to the formula. Number two, it helps to improve the ability to deal with stress and relax, which is so important if you're somebody like me who's in a fight sport where you're gonna have a lot of stress because you're up against guys like Mosab Ambrani. Throughout the whole training camp, I was stressed. I would have loved to have had some magnesium just to lower that down and allow me to focus more on the fight camp and be a little happier day to day. Number three, studies have shown that 400 milligrams, that's approximately two pills of magnesium from bioptimizers will help improve exercise recovery. You take these with your breakfast and boom, you're gonna recover faster. My recovery lately has been on point. Now I'm not training hard like I'm in fight camp, which is why I'm super excited to enter my next fight camp and see if I have the same results I'm feeling right now where I go train and then I'm feeling recovered so much faster than I used to. And number four, magnesium helps build stronger bones. If you are deficient, you have more likelihood of developing osteoporosis. This is something I don't want. My bones have always been very strong and it's just a real godsend because not having bone pain and bones breaking down with injuries has just made a world of difference in my career, in my longevity. And I want to keep that going moving forward, especially as I become an athlete in my late thirties. So those are four reasons that you guys want to get on this magnesium supplement. I hope you take my advice. I hope you give it a try. And remember, magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel. Use the promo code Gabriel10. And guys, let's move in to my favorite round, round number four with Mosab Amrani. Why is this round my favorite? Well, throughout the months of prep, we knew that some point Mosab was gonna tire down and then I could start implementing my game plan. This is the round it happened in. Let's take a closer look. It's nice when things finally start to go according to plan. Now, I'm the one who's leading off and who's throwing the shots. I'm landing, he's the one getting hurt, and we know that yes, he will still come with explosive shots, and he's still super dangerous, 
but now I can really start to take over. I can really start to let my shots land and I don't have to be quite as worried. Mixing up levels all the time. You wanna come high, low, angles, always changing. If the legs are there, you wanna chop them. You wanna make life very difficult for somebody when they're trying to find a pattern to your attacks. You want no pattern. But like I said, he's still super dangerous. He's still bombing shots in. Right now, it's a matter of me being smart, trying to find the openings, making sure I don't just stand in front and let him throw those big, powerful blows. As we get deeper into the round, we see Mosab slow down more and more. His shot's getting a little bit more sloppy because that fatigue is setting in. I'm trying to keep everything on point, trying to make sure that he's not landing anything substantial. And here we go, boom, boom double rattle his head. It's amazing that he stayed up after that combination. Those were both right on the jaw. When you see them in slow motion, you go, oh, geez. And he managed to stay up, which is just a testament to how tough he is. Everybody at this super high level is crazy tough. I have realized that now. That is a massive difference between people who are in the top five and the people who are down sort of in that rankings of 20 and below. Massive skills, massive toughness to all the top guys. You don't get to the pinnacle of the sport without being super tough. A fantastic closing to round four where we both just stand our ground, throw down, and bomb shots back and forth. Super exciting. And finally, we move into the last round of the fight. Round number five. At this point, I don't really know what's happening. I know I did not win round one, but there's a good chance three and four were mine. Round two, not sure, but I have to go for it. I have to win this round. I know that. Mosab has recovered his energy a little bit. He's coming out hard, coming out fast, still trying to get that big knockdown. The shots and the speed between his combos or his punches is spectacular. That's one of the dangers about him. If he hits you here and then he's coming right down here, you don't have a lot of time to be going individually. You just have to keep tight, keep shelled up and make sure nothing lands. One of the things going into this fight, which I did recognize is it's tiring throwing legs. Legs are much more exhausting than hands. And I did want to utilize them, but I was realistic. And I just went, you know what? They won't probably come out that much. I'm not gonna try and outkick this guy. It's not gonna be like a kicking versus punching battle because it'll be too fatiguing and I need to keep my energy because I have to push hard in the first couple of rounds to wear him down. But still in the fifth round, we see me starting to throw in some kicks. I throw them, I go, oh, they're tiring, then I go back to hands, but still mixing them in as best I can and being unpredictable. I like this next combo here. Standing in the fray a little bit, big shots coming. Little switch kick, just mixing it up, using that footwork, making sure that it's just difficult for him to land. And you can see at any second here, I'm ready to pull my head out of the way if he comes with a big attack. Into the last minute of the fight. Nice double jab there. Try to whip the hook in. Nice evasion by him. Switching up the levels now, body and head and down to the body, making my head pull back very, very fast utilizing the whole ring, making sure that he can't just walk me into the ring ropes like I let happen early in the fight. And right down to the final stages of this fight, there's still spinning kicks coming out, still busting out all the fancy techniques, big whipping hook behind the guard there. Those are nice ones to set up. Just keeping him on the back pedal, not giving him time. Take a little shot there just because I'm being lazy. And that's the end of the fight. A spectacular contest between the two of us. I really thought Mosab and I would go on and have a rematch just because that was such an exciting fight. But as it turned out, once he fought me, he had trouble getting the title back. He ended up facing Sergey Adamchuk, who I fought twice, and couldn't figure out how to defeat him. Adamchuk was quite the puzzle, and Mosab, with his pressure style, just couldn't really crack it. So Mosab never really saw him climb back up to the very top stage. I think he did win a contender tournament after that, but I am still kind of disappointed the two of us didn't get to meet again and put on another spectacular fight. I hope everybody enjoyed this breakdown of Mosab versus I. I hope you enjoyed getting to hear my thoughts on it. Keep in mind that these big, massive fights, when you're fighting at the top level, it's just a dream come true. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story about waking up the next morning. So I went to bed. My sleep routine is usually very, very short after I win a fight or after if I don't win a fight because I sleep so much fight week. So usually I go back to my hotel room, I get about two hours of sleep and then I naturally wake up. Partially because my sleep schedule is all over the place because I'm usually traveling and I'm jet lagged. But anyway, I woke up after my two hours of sleep 
and my eyes were closed, but I was awake. And I remember going, I just dreamt that I beat Mosab. And oh man, that was an awesome dream. And then I kind of went, wait, no, I, did I actually fight? Like, is it the morning after the fight? And I was kind of disoriented, still a little, a little hazy from waking up. And it took me a good 20, 30 seconds where I sat there with my eyes closed, trying to decide if there was a belt right beside my bed, a big glory belt, which I dreamed about achieving, winning for so long. Is it there? Or did I imagine it? And now do I have to wake up on fight day and actually go and try and win it? And it took me about 30 seconds. I went, no, I think I really won it. I remember opening my eyes, looking, Oh yes, I did win it. The <laughs> fight's done. I accomplished my dream. And that was just a really wild moment for me because usually that doesn't happen. Usually when I wake up right away, I'm sharp, I'm dialed in. I know exactly what is happening. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the fight highlights, this fight breakdown of one of the most important fights of my career, one I am super proud of. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel, get subscribed. Remember, head over to Buy Optimizers. The website, magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel. Use the promo code Gabriel10 to get yourself 10% off on this magnesium supplement, which I am just in love with. Guys, I'll see you back here soon for another episode. Until then, continue to train hard.